Hey now, um, I'm Dave. I think I, I've showed you this before. I've got a little uh, remote control thing now for the camera. Hopefully it's working. Uh, I guess we'll see you later. Um, here to talk about a very, uh, a very special thing going on in the Grateful Dead world this year, and that is the 50th, 5-0, 50th anniversary of the Europe 72 tour and all of the, uh, the hoopla around that in terms of the release of the album later in uh, 1972, 50 years ago. But the tour began April 7th, 1972. It's funny, here we are in uh, Oyster Catchers. Um, uh, here we are at the beginning of April uh, when I'm taping this and it's cold out. It kind of feels like a nice English day. Um, I lived in England for a little while and uh, was fortunate to experience all of the great weather in England, uh, the cold weather, the rain, and some beautiful days as well. So uh, here to talk about the 50th anniversary of Europe 72 of the tour and all of the kind of special things we've got going on around the, uh, around the year and uh, around the release um, or the uh, celebration of the 50th anniversary. These are loud birds. I don't know if you're picking them up on the, uh, on the microphone, but um, yeah, they are. Uh, so uh, April 7th, 1972, the Grateful Dead started the tour in London. And then uh, almost two months later on May 26th, they ended the tour. And this to me is, um, I mean, you can say this about a lot of things, but truly, I think one of the best uh, tours in the Dead's history. Uh, consistently, it was great. Every single night was something very, very special. And so that was uh, something to definitely focus on. As you probably know, in 2011, um, the Grateful Dead released a box set, which was every show on the tour, uh, 21 proper shows, plus one television taping appearance on April 21st in Bremen, uh, West Germany. The, uh, the B Club taping, um, and otherwise 21 uh, complete shows. And every single night on this tour, uh, I think is an exceptional show, worthy of release, which is why it was the first tour that we did something like this with, where we released every show on the tour. Uh, we'd been doing um, several up until then, several complete runs of shows. Uh, of course, the Fillmore West in 1969, Winterland in 73 and 77. We've got um, those box sets. Uh, Hampton um, in 1989, the formerly the Warlocks, and then when, um, as, as kind of our release plans grew, uh, Europe 72 seemed to me like a, a bit of an obvious um, thing that warranted. Of course, it was uh, quite ambitious, 73 CDs all mixed from the multi-tracks, um, but uh, clearly I think uh, some people agreed, and uh, here we are 11 years later celebrating it even further. So. Uh, we have a lot happening this year for the, uh, it's windy, I hope this doesn't get picked up on the microphone. Um, we have a lot, uh, a lot of, we have a lot of releases coming out to celebrate uh, the 50th anniversary. Um, of course, now, a, a bit of my personal history with Europe 72, when I was 14 years old, I remember it well, it was right before my 15th birthday in the fall of 1985. Um, I was uh, in grade 10 in high school, and a friend of mine, Alan, uh, he knew I was into the dead. He goes, oh, my dad's into the dead too. And uh, he's got a, a bunch of Grateful Dead records. I go, oh, wow. And I, by then I'd collected quite a few, but I was missing, you know, I don't know, a third, maybe even half of the albums. And uh, he said, um, he said, do you want my dad's, he, my dad doesn't listen to his records very much anymore. Do you want his records? I said, I do. So the next day, Alan came to class, the next, came to school the next day. I remember right exactly where he handed them to me. And he handed me, Historic Dead, that 1971 kind of semi-official uh, release from uh, 1966, released in 71, the companion to Vintage Dead. And then he handed me Europe 72. And I couldn't believe it, a triple LP. Now, interestingly enough, the album he gave me was missing the third LP. So I was missing side five and six, as we all know what's on five and six. Um, so for the first, year or two that I had that album, I didn't know uh, Truckin' and uh, Morning Dew with the epilogue and prelude. Um, so I kind of been missing those until, I don't know, a couple years later when I finally got the full album. Uh, this is before CDs, of course. And so um, this is not that, this is a, a reissue of the album. And, uh, oh, I love when you can flip it over and see the other side, like that, it's pretty amazing. Um, 
I brought props today, can you imagine that? Um, and so the first, I think, thing to talk about is the reissue of the album, which has uh, been remastered by Dave Glasser. As you know, Dave works on a lot of projects with us. We've got um, Jeffrey Norman primarily doing the archival Grateful Dead live shows, the Dave's picks, the, the box sets, things like that. And then Dave primarily does um, the studio records and the contemporary live albums like Europe 72, Skull and Roses, things like that. But he also does quite a few other things with us as well. Um, he's incredible. So Dave has remastered the album. It's coming out uh, on a 3LP set. Um, just sounds magnificent. And you know, with all the reissues that happen over the years, I've been working with the Dead for quite a while. It's been issued a couple of times this album. And it, I, in my opinion, it does keep sounding better. I guess technology gets a little better, experience gets a little better. The tapes still sound as great today as they did when they were uh, recorded 50 years ago. So we do tend to, uh, I mean, I think, sound uh, the, the albums tend to sound better every time we remaster. So uh, if you don't have the album, now is the time to get it because it does sound magnificent. Um, we also have uh, a couple of other things and then some things that I probably won't even talk about today that we'll get to later in the year. But um, one of the things which I think as ambitious as something like the Fillmore West box set was uh, 16, 17, 18 years ago, whenever that came out, 17 years ago, um, a, a similarly ambitious uh, thing that's happening is the 24 LP box set of the Grateful Dead's final four-night run of the Europe 72 tour at the Lyceum in London. Every note played, every note recorded, uh, uh, four nights of excellence. Uh, going back to my tape trading days, I knew May 23rd very well. I knew May 26th very well, but I didn't know May 24th and 25th. And it turns out they're uh, equally great as the bookends, the uh, May 23rd and 26th shows. So because we've already released the entire tour as the box set uh, several years ago, um, we didn't have material that hadn't been released. So what we've decided to do is uh, remaster the music and make it sound, uh, I mean, it sounds fantastic. It's Jeffrey Norman's 2011 mixes. We didn't remix, um, but Dave has done a, an absolutely spectacular job for vinyl on this and these were all plangentized as we call it plangent processes many years ago as well um, so Dave has uh, created this 24 LP masterpiece uh, in mastering and it is something to behold so if you like the 3 LP set from Europe 72 but never kind of felt it was enough which I didn't I mean as great as I think 3, three LPs is not many bands do that um, it was never enough, and so now we've got 24 LPs. We do, have, like I say, other surprises happening later in the year. Um, I don't know if they're surprises, I guess they are. But uh, we got some things happening that are pretty cool. Um, but this, this Lyceum box set is something that when the idea came up and was floated, to me it sounded like uh, just a really phenomenal uh, way to get this music to you in a unique way. And you know, we're collectors. I mean, I love uh, two things about uh, records. I love playing them, I love the music on them, I love the sound, I guess that's three things. But the other thing I like is the uh, is collecting. I, I do like to collect, and I think as deadheads, we, many of us do like to collect things. You know, going back to my tape trading days 35 years ago or more, um, I, we, I, we just like cool things, I think, um, and things that can last, and things that we can, frankly, pass down. Um, you know, these are things that are not just in passing. Um, these are things that, gosh, wow, they're having a party over there. Um, so uh, I think that this is, uh, I, th I think, I mean, for me, on my shelf, it's gonna be a great addition to my collection. Um, the other thing, uh, if you're not uh, into the, um, the whole, uh, 24 LP thing and, and maybe some won't be. Uh, Rhino is also releasing, and I think this is a great thing, um, the entire May 26th show, the final night of the tour, a very long show, the first time playing in the band clocked in at like 17 minutes earlier in the tour. It was still like an eight or nine minute song, kind of started cracking 10 minutes a few shows into the tour, got a little longer and by the Lyceum it was up to 13, 14, 15, and by the final night it was up to 17. This is the show that was so good that rather than the typical second set closer of not fade, going down the road, not fade, they end the first set with that. Like this is unheard of. And then the second set, I mean, 
I don't need to say too much um, because you might know some of it uh, from trucking and Morning Dew and Prelude and uh, Epilogue from Europe 72, but also uh, it weaves in and out of the other one. And there's a beautiful Sing Me Back Home on here. Uh, oh, there's an eagle flying right over my head. That was spectacular. I turned the camera, but the sun is right there. But it was, I mean, 20 or 30 feet up. And the seagulls, you probably heard, were chasing it. Um, seagulls are always chasing eagles. Um, seagulls and eagles. Um, so that show's coming out on CD as well. So there's a little bit, I think, for everyone with the, uh, the Europe 72 reissue. Again, it sounds magnificent, looks great, everything about it. Um, and then uh, add to that the 24 LP from the Lyceum shows, which I can't wait to see. And I've, I've heard it, I've listened to the test pressings uh, a couple of times, a few times, um, which sound amazing. Uh, Dave and I, uh, Listen to all the test pressings and Steve Woolard at the uh, Rhino. Um, we all check them out and they do sound, I mean, they're, I guess flawless is the way to call it. Uh, we would reject them if they didn't. Um, and then, so we've got the, the 24 LP from the Lyceum shows, again, from Jeffrey Norman's 2011 mixes from the multi-tracks, um, every note they played at the Lyceum. And it sounds magnificent. Now these were Pigpen's um, final shows at which he sang. He appeared at one more, uh, Grateful Dead show and that was at the Hollywood Bowl on June 17th about three weeks after Europe They played a show at the Hollywood Bowl Pigpen appeared there and he wasn't doing too well You can hear him play organ on the tape a little bit, but he didn't sing um, whereas at the uh, At the Lyceum you're gonna hear good lovin and mr. Charlie next time you see me and, and turn on your love light for the last time the stranger two souls in communion um, so much great uh, Pigpen at these shows Chinatown shuffle um, it's really and a lot of organ playing too which I think is great um, Pigpen's organ playing also one of these Lyceum shows um, it's kind of funny during Good Lovin Pigpen is singing and when Pigpen sang Good Lovin and, and Turn On Your Love Light for the most part he was up at the front of the stage with the microphone um, and you're going to hear on one of these shows during Good Lovin you're going to hear some organ playing but it's quite rudimentary um, but it's definitely I mean it's not rudimentary it's it's different I'll say that it's different than pig playing. it's because Jerry is playing organ on good Lovin'. and we we talked about this one we released the uh, box set in 2011 but it's Jerry on uh, organ during good Lovin'. you'll hear it because you hear pig singing while the organs kind of blasting in the background and it's a little different than than pig organ playing so uh, pretty amazing stuff uh, Jerry on organ um, so much great music here. Uh, the, the Lyceum vinyl box has a couple of great dark stars, a couple of wonderful uh, versions of the other one. Now, I've talked about this before. Uh, in the past, a lot of people have asked me if, if I could only suggest five Europe 72 shows because you know some people don't have the time or the, the cost to, to pick up 22 shows. So they asked for recommendations of five, and I'd often say uh, April 8th in London, April 14th in Tivoli, um, a few of the well-known shows, a Paris show maybe, um, but one of the shows, a little under the radar for a lot of people, including me, but it's proven to be one of my favorite shows on the entire tour, and that is May 24th. There's something extremely special about May 24th, the second show at the Lyceum. Uh, everything is played, I think, quite perfectly. Um, it's one of the most precise, um, concise and precise shows. A wonderful version of the other one. Everything that you expect from Europe 72 is played at this show and everything is played. The band is, is remarkably focused. Now, I've talked about this before that at the end of the tour, they most certainly were not out of steam. They were uh, still full of steam, full of uh, uh, Vim, is that the word, Viv, Vim? Yeah, Vim, full of Vim, I guess. They were they were having a good time. They didn't want, the, I don't think they wanted this to end. Um, certainly, uh, based on the performance, they didn't. So, um, anyhow, check it out, go to dead.net. Uh, we're going to be celebrating throughout the year. We're going to be, uh, the good old Grateful Dead cast, Jesse and Rich, will be doing a lot of Europe 72 the next couple months. Um, the daily show on Sirius XM uh, that I do, uh, we'll be visiting every stop on the tour, uh, plus some other things. Uh, from the tour for the next couple of months and then uh, head to dead.net the uh, the vinyl box is limited uh, Possibly 4,000 I think so do check it out um, Europe 72 the album has been remastered on vinyl uh, and then May 26 72 the final night of the tour on CD as well 
Um, so a little bit of something for everyone. And then throughout the year, we've got a couple of other great things happening um, to celebrate the tour, which uh, will get announced as we as we get going. But we, it's not over with these with this announcement. We've got other cool things happening. So thank you for joining me. I'll be back soon, uh, within a, a couple of weeks. With um, oh, I don't know whenever, but soon with a uh, a Dave's picks uh, 40, 42 announcement. Uh, that'll come out May 1st, so we'll have an announcement for that soon too. We've already announced the show, of course, Winterland 74, but um, we'll talk about that in depth in a little while. I love doing these videos. So thank you for listening. It's a bit windy, but hopefully the new camera and the new microphone can handle the wind and the waves. But uh, if not, we'll uh, we'll retape it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon. I gotta look. I gotta shut this off with the the button. I don't have to like come up and push something. So thanks for uh, checking us out.